district families, parents, and community members. My name is Sheila Quinn, Superintendent of Clover School District, and I have been providing town hall information about the upcoming bond referendum so that our community can, can have the most important information to make a good decision on September the 18th. The purpose of this presentation is to provide you with the facts about the Capital Improvement Plan. I'm going to cover growth in Clover School District, the need for new schools, the need for 21st century learning upgrades in some of our facilities, and our financially responsible plan to address growth. This is our Clover School District complete attendance zone as it is marked by the seven elementary schools. You can see those color coded on the map. It has all 11 schools and where they are located. You can also see on this slide our oldest school, which is Bethel Elementary School, down to some of our newer schools, which is Oak Ridge Elementary School and Clover Middle School. Our fastest growing zones are here in Oak Ridge Elementary School and Oak Ridge Middle School, followed by Crowders, and the new growth will be coming in this Bethel School Zone. We are also going to see growth in Griggs, Larn, Clover Middle, and Bethel, but not to the same degree that we will see in the first three. There are some flags on this map. The flag here is the Daimler property. This is where we own 178 acres and will be the site where the new schools will be built. We also own land downtown Clover behind our district office. And this is also a site where we are projecting to put a new facility. Beside Larne, we have 15 acres that can be used when we have growth on this side of our community to add on to Larne. And we also have about 30 some odd acres around Clover Middle School that could be used down the road for another elementary school. <clears throat> These are the last two bond referendums that we've had for Clover School District. You can see in 2006 we had a bond referendum in 2014. Notice that's about eight years difference. And we are now in 2021, just about to turn to 2022, which will be another eight year span and a need for some capital improvements. In this bond referendum in 2006, you can see we had strong support, uh, but we had a little less support, although we did win the bond referendum in this one. Uh, the biggest difference between the two was in this bond in 2014, uh, there was a segment of our community that believed that we needed a high school in Lake Wiley even back in 2014. Instead, the board elected to take a more fiscally conservative route. They uh, took over the old Clover Middle School and made it a ninth grade campus to expand the high school footprint. And they built a new Clover Middle School out in the western side of our district. This bond referendum actually takes that ninth grade space and recaptures it for a middle school. And we're going to talk about that and the need for a middle school in just a few minutes. This is just a quick look of our financial information. Clover School District does enjoy a financial excellent rating. Uh, you can see in 2019, the blue graph here, and in 2020, uh, we did not go up on our operating budget, even though we were still growing and we grew it that year by 17 teachers. We were able to do that with no new state funding coming in from our district. We also have a fund balance and that fund balance supports the operational budget and that is a three month operating budget in case there is ever something catastrophic that happens. But it also allows us in uh, September, October and November to be able to make payroll by borrowing from ourselves while we are waiting for taxes to come in in January. These next two bar graphs are our outstanding bond debt. We uh, in 2019 owed 94 million. In uh, 2020, we were down to 89.3 million. And that is representing the last two bond referendums that you saw on the previous slide. And then finally, uh, we also maintain a building fund balance that helps us when we have to have unexpected large projects like large HVAC systems, roofing type types of projects. Uh, or in this case, it allows us to have some funds to put down for the bond referendum. And we, will, we are going to be able to contribute from the building fund balance $35.1 million, $35 million towards the projects that we're going to talk about today. And now let's talk a little bit about growth. This graph represents three things. First, the red part of the graph is our last 10 years enrollment growth. Those are the numbers that are already in the books from 2009-10 to 2010 or 1920. Here you can look at the 
uh, 2009, 10, 10, 11, and 11, 12, while we were growing, our growth rate was a lot flatter. Then you can see that's what's happened in the last five years. Our growth rate has taken a, a sharper slope up. We finished the school year with around 85, 71 students last year, and when we opened the doors this year on the first day of school, we had over 9,000 students in power school. We have seen a little bit of fluctuation in those numbers between uh, the opening of school and Labor Day and, of course, the pandemic. We've seen some families uh, become a little nervous about face-to-face -face schooling and they are taking some other options. But we are still at just under 8,900 students as we began this school year. And uh, that was a growth of almost 400 students this summer. The green line is the most conservative projection of our growth going forward. It is basically known as a cohort survival line. And that is what percentage of your cohort moves up from kindergarten to first, first to second, second to third. And that is uh, showing that uh, in five years, our growth could be somewhere between 9,735 students and then up to the 10-year mark, 10,920 students. Again, very conservative estimation. The purple line takes into account this last 10-year trajectory. It says if you keep growing like you did the last 10 years, your growth in the next 10 years will take you up to 11,782. That's a slightly more aggressive uh, projection. However, it is skewed by the fact that the last five years have been so much greater than the first five. And so we actually believe that both of these numbers could potentially be low. This is now taking a look at, instead of our whole district, it's looking school by school. And we decided to look at the last five years of growth at each of our elementary school because those are the numbers that are trending to where we're seeing our current enrollment and then project out what that will do to, to the next 10 years in each individual school. And so the colors are important to notice here. The colors are red, meaning the school is already approaching 95% capacity. The yellow between 80 and 95 percent and the green below 80 percent. I added some information to this slide just to give you some perspective. These are the actual enrollments in our Power School database as of Friday, uh, September the 10th. Uh, you can see, for example, Bethany had 400 students. It's capacity of students that it can hold based on how our program runs it. Uh, Bethany is 400. 30, and so then you can see the next few years, Bethany is already in the 95% um, capacity rate. You can take a look down at some other schools that we're looking at. Crowder's uh, Oak Ridge Elementary School is already at capacity. The middle schools are the tightest crunch. You can see both Clover Middle and Oak Ridge Middle are going to reach capacity by 24, 25. Oak Ridge uh, Middle School is already at capacity, uh, just under it. Um, it will, we will have to do some mitigating factors at Oak Ridge Middle School, even if this bond passes in the next few years, to be able to get some relief for by the time the schools are all built to help out the, the capacity and crowding issues at Oak Ridge Middle. And then finally at the high school, you can see that at the high school we have a good capacity because we are currently operating the high school in two buildings. We have the ninth grade building that holds almost 1,000 students and Clover High School that holds about 2,300. And you can see how that is breaking down. Our current enrollment at Clover High School is 2,630. But you can see that by 2526, those numbers are starting to get uh, pushed. And that has the high school growing to almost 3,000 or just above 3,000 students by that 25-26 school year. And it's because of that potential number being so high when you have parking issues already now, traffic issues now, very narrow halls, only one cafeteria, one media center. There are things other than classroom space that are going to make Clover High School in 25-26 with a potential 28 to 3,000, 2,800 to 3,000 students be a very, very uncomfortable type place to be. We talk about growth and new construction is a big part of that story. A lot of people are focused on the new construction that is happening on the Lake Wiley side of our community, Paddler's Cove and Cypress Point being two examples. But there are also is, are several developments going up on the western side and even in downtown Clover. Boschheimer Farms is a new development that's going up very quickly. 174 homes are coming in, this, in the central part of Clover, which will impact Kynard Elementary School. And then in, in, out in Bethany, we have 74 homes going up in uh, Shepherd's Trace. 
Let's take a look at the uh, proposed developments that are coming. First, this is the town of Clover, and these developments are between 2021 and 2027, so over the next six years. Uh, right now, already approved to be built in the town of Clover. We have 373 more homes coming. A lot of this development is going to specifically impact Kynard Elementary School and a little bit of Lauren, but mostly Kynard. In the unincorporated areas of our school district, uh, that includes Bethany, Bowling Green on the western side, and Bethel and Lake Wiley proper on the uh, eastern side, you can see that the remaining units to be built are 2,878. So this is what's already approved. In addition to what we've got in, our crowded, in some of our crowded schools right now, this is what's left to be built and still coming in the next six years. And as you know, it doesn't you can't build a school overnight. You have to take it to the public, you have to get it approved, get the funding secured, you have to clear the sites, and then you have to build the schools. So this is a 36, in the, the case of a high school, a 36 to 42 month process. So these new homes coming on, we can't wait till they're all here and then go out to build. We've got to be building now while they're coming. Let's take a look at the school by school impact of those developments that you just saw on the last two slides that are coming to our district. So we broke it down by elementary zone. This is the Oak Ridge Elementary School zone right here in blue. There are 369 more units already approved to be built. In this green Crowder zone, there are 1,093 more units already approved to be built. And in this pink Bethel zone, there are 1,204 new units already approved to be built. So when I said to you initially that there's growth on this eastern side, that equates to 2,666 homes, all of which impact this is Oak Ridge Middle School right here. And then you can see the elementary schools. In the other areas of our district, these other four areas that you see, that represents about 522 more homes coming in several different school sites here in Griggs, in Larne, in Kynard, and out in Bethany. So the growth, again, is on both sides, but it is certainly more intense on this side, which is why we are projecting the new schools to be built at this flag that you see in the pink zone here. Now let's talk about what the plan actually entails. Clover School District uh, began looking at its capacity, its demographics, and its building space back in 2018. And most of you remember we went through a very long uh, protracted discussion with the county about an impact fee. We started that process in 2018. We were not approved until 2020 and not allowed to collect funds until 20, January of 2020-21. So uh, we were talking a lot with our public during all of those presentations about the schools for growth because in a capital and a plan for impact fees, you've got to be focused on schools for growth. Once we finished that process and were approved for an impact fee, uh, a portion of the impact fee we qualified for, we began to also look at what are some other 21st century, century learning spaces in our district that we need to think about as a part of a bond package. And so it falls into two categories. We've got three needs for schools for growth. Primarily biggest need is middle school number three. We're going to capture middle school number three by working on high school number two, and that will be clear when I show you the plan, and in elementary school number eight. These schools, these two schools here will be on that Dimer property. This middle school will be a recapturing of the ninth grade campus back to a middle school. And the second bucket were the 21st century learning upgrades. We believe that Clover High School is going to need some 21st century learning upgrades. Uh, we've got some specific areas of that building we want to touch because we will now have two high schools that we want both um, schools to have equitable learning experiences. And then we have Bethany Elementary School that, uh, again, is on our western side and has an opportunity to do some upgrades that are long overdue to bring it into alignment with our other elementary schools. And then finally, our warehouse, our technology, innovation and technology warehouse, we want to do something that will be a more multi-use center. So let's take a look at these six projects. These are the schools needed to address growth. This is our Daimler property, which is down on Hands Mill Road. This is the Daimler Road here. 274 Hands Mill will be over here. You can see we've got an elementary school kind of tucked up here in the corner and then a high school in the middle. 
I'm going to talk about middle school number three. Look at the timeline for these. The elementary school will come on first in 24-25 to relieve the overcrowding at Oak Ridge Elementary School, at Bethel Elementary School, and Crowder's Creek. And then the middle school will come online when we're able to move the ninth grade out of the ninth grade campus and into Clover High School. And that over, Clover High School will be overcrowded at that point. And so that's why we need high school number two. So let's take a look at just a few uh, renderings. This is elementary school number eight on the Daimler property. Uh, just a couple of features. It does have a secure courtyard in the back for students to play in. And it is a two-story uh, building on the back side uh, so that we can maximize efficiency in heating and cooling and the space on the property. And this is high school number two. A couple of key features about this. Uh, because it's a 9 through 12, it will have a ninth grade academy over here on the left. It's two stories. And a 10th through 12th grade uh, uh, side over here that is three stories. It has a connecting uh, media center that connects the two sides. It also will have its own athletic facilities, including a stadium. We are not in this facility going to replicate the Applied Technology Center, the vocational wing. It will have a vocational set of classes. But the large number of vocational classes will remain at the Applied Technology Center, and both Clover High School and this high school number two will share that facility. This is the linchpin uh, piece of property. This is our current ninth grade campus. Again, it holds almost a thousand, and so we want to make this middle school number three. Many of you know it used to be Clover Middle, and so it has served us very, very well as a middle school, but it is going to need a couple of, of renovations in order to separate it now from the high school. The first thing, and we've zeroed in here, this is the overview, aerial view of the ninth grade campus. Now we're calling it the potential middle school number three. We've got to give it its own traffic pattern separate from the Clover High School traffic pattern. So you can see we're proposing taking the traffic here and around and then around the front and back out. So that's a key project that's got to be done. We're going to also reroute the bus loop. So the buses come around the back of the school and pick up here, loop around. We'll have to create this big bus loop and then back out. To get the space for the bus loop, we're going to have to move our tennis courts that are here to a new location uh, that uh, you can't see on this map. And then the last thing we've got to do here on the outside is we've got to add a, a field. This school will have one field here and one field here because there are 7th and 8th grade sports. You, so you need two fields for both girls and boys in, in the spring when we're playing lacrosse and soccer. The next thing we've got to do to this building is we want to secure it from the high school. So we want to close it in this courtyard that's already here. There's a building over here and there's a building on this side. So we'll add a chorus and a band room. When this used to be Clover Middle, the chorus and band students had to leave the middle school and go over to the high school for chorus and band. And we don't think that is the safest option for families. So we're going to add this chorus and band wing here and then close in the final area between the high school so that we have a secure courtyard for our middle school students. Those are the three schools needed for growth. Again, let me remind you, we're taking over part of the high, ninth grade campus or part of the high school capacity by taking over that ninth grade campus and we're not building a middle school. That is going to save the taxpayers approximately $50 million to do that instead of building the middle school now. But it will reduce what Clover High School has in capacity and therefore that is the need for that second high school. Now let's talk about some of the 21st century learning space upgrades that are also a part of this bond package. This is Clover High School, and this is the footprint of Clover High School. Here will be the ninth grade academy for Clover High, and it is one story here and two stories back here. And then here's the 10th through 12th grade wing for Clover High School. So again, when you look in comparison, the two, comparing the two schools, you can see we're trying to keep in mind the same ninth grade space and 10th through 12th grade space. Everywhere you see a blue circle, you can see that we're trying to do some 21st century learning upgrades to make sure that Clover High School has all the same uh, unique spaces that the second high school will have. Uh, we're going to redo the media center and the commons area. We're going to upgrade the cafeteria and courtyard area for indoor-outdoor eating. We're going to improve the athletic facilities and the bathrooms. Let's take a quick look at some of those. This will be where the current media center is. This is an opened up commons area. 
right in the center in the heart of Clover High School. And then where you see this glass will be where the new media center will uh, start. It is already storage space for us, but when you open that space up, there's room for a media center. And then in the upstairs 200 wing, where the 10th through 12th grade academic classes are, we have a wide hallway. We're going to expand a little wider, remove the lockers, and create an open collaborative learning space for our 10th through 12th grade students. In the athletic side of this, uh, we are going to create an athletic field house that's right off the 400 hall where we have some of our locker rooms now. And uh, this will be an uh, almost mirror image uh, athletic field house to the field house at high school number two. It has a large weight room, some uh, locker rooms here, and a wrestling room so that both schools have the same facilities. And then finally, at the back of the school, this is the most used entrance into Clover High School. It's the door that goes into our large gym where we have basketball, volleyball, wrestling, cheerleading, spaghetti supper dinners, pep rallies, everything that our community comes into. And so we feel like our vestibule area needs to be expanded for more bathroom space, concession space, and just more room when we have large numbers of people in this building. The second 21st century learning upgrade is for Bethel, or excuse me, Bethany Elementary School. Bethany is located in, uh, in the western side of our district. It is an area that is uh, seeing some growth, and Bethany right now is at 100% capacity. Every room, every closet, every place in this school is used. It is a Title I school, and so when we like to add classrooms to reduce class size, we cannot do that at Bethany because we are at capacity. The other thing about Bethany is that it has a very small cafeteria, the smallest in our district. It cannot hold two grade levels at any one given time. And so you can see the footprint here. We've acquired some land right beside Bethany already uh, just recently. And so right now, Bethany only has this small traffic loop, which cannot hold its population, which means all the cars are on this uh, Maynard Grayson Road. So what we're projecting to do is create a larger stacking area for cars, that will allow us to get cars off of Maynard Grayson. Also a new bus loop that will allow us to get all our buses off of Maynard Grayson. And then we want to add four classrooms over here, academic classrooms. One of those, a science lab. We'll upgrade a science lab in the heart of the school as well. And some collaborative space here so we can have families in to see student learning projects and presentations for Bethany. And then back here, we want to enlarge that cafeteria. You can see we're also going to be able to take over some of this area back here now for playground space and a walking track for our Bethany community. Here is just a quick shot of the academic classes added on to the front side of Bethany. And then this would be the cafeteria to expand Bethany's cafeteria. Last but not least, this is our IT warehouse. It is located in the heart of downtown Clover. It is a truly a warehouse. There's some uh, office space up front, but the vast majority of this building is unair conditioned. It houses our smart boards, all of our one-to-one -one devices as they come in to be refreshed every single year. Uh, it is uh, unair conditioned in the back and it has a no fire alarm system. And to uh, get it upgraded in, as a part of our 10 year facility study plan, it's going to take about $1.2 million just to do the very basic things to get it up to speed. But we know if we went in to begin to work on this, we would probably have to bring several other things up to code. So the board decided that it wasn't a good use of funds to upgrade this warehouse facility, but instead, to create something that could be multi-use for both our district needs as well as the community needs. And so what they are proposing on the property that's close to our district office, kind of behind us near New Center Town Park or down beside our stadium area, uh, is a two-story building. The bottom would be our IT offices and our special education offices for OT, PT, speech therapists, and our clerical staff and uh, records recordings for special ed. And then the back would be a warehouse space for all of our devices that is air conditioned and has appropriate fire alarm systems. And then on the top floor, we could have a space for professional development. We do not have a space big enough to house all of our teachers and professional development. We also don't have a place in Clover to house a prom. 
retirement banquet, teacher of the year banquet, any community chamber events that are downtown Clover. There's not a big enough venue to, to do that. And so we believe we can help the community as well as help the district with some of its needs by having a second floor to this building. And so you can imagine this is the second floor that could be conference space. Um, this is the IT warehouse side underneath it and then the special ed and IT offices are on the front of the building. Those are the projects in this bond referendum. Now let's talk about the financial impact. The, uh, this bond is one of the largest bonds. Well, it is the largest bond in Clover School District history. It's certainly not the largest bond in South Carolina. There have been many, many other bond referendums that are more. Uh, the biggest ticket item, as you can see, is the high school at $139 million. It is a 4,000 square foot high school uh, for 2,000 students. And that $139 million is not just the building cost. That's the site work, the owner occupancy costs, all the soft costs that go into that, getting the... Um, grounds ready, getting the roads ready around it, as well as the building. And then the 36,000 is elementary school, number eight. Here's the nice one, uh, that middle school, ninth grade conversion to the middle school, instead of being 50 million to the taxpayers, it's two to renovate that school to become a middle school again. Clover High School, 22.5, Bethany, 2.5, and the Innovation Center and Technology Center, 6.8. Then when you count in the furniture, the fixtures, the technology, and some of the other landscaping needs on all of these projects, that's your 23, this total bond package could be almost $232 million. However, remember, I told you that the district had $35.1 million that it is able to contribute towards this project. And so what we are asking the public is for a clean $197 million. However, here are a couple of caveats that we want our taxpayers to understand. If, we, if there is a vote yes, you are saying to us, you can borrow up to $197 million, no more than that, to get all of that work done. But the, the real point I want to make here is the district is not going to need to borrow all $197 million because we have an impact fee. And as of January 15th, 2021, when we were allowed to begin to collect impact fees, we have already collected $1.24 million in impact fees that will, we will apply to the cost of this bond referendum. So when we are approved to borrow the $197 million, we will not borrow it all in one single bit. We will borrow it in several draws. So when we make that last draw, to borrow the last bit of money, whatever we have collected in 25, 26, right before that last school opens, whatever is collected in impact fees will be paid towards a bill towards that final high school payment, and we will not borrow all the 197. We will borrow whatever is less with this 1.2 million now. It could be 3 million, it could be 4 million. We don't know how it's going to be because we don't know how many of those single family homes are going to be online by 25, 26, or how many of those town homes or mobile homes are going to be uh, in, online. So we can't know. We do know maximum by 2027 based on all of the homes that are already approved what it could be to offset the bond. So that means while we're asking you for this 197, we will not need to ask you fully for all of that when we see how much we have in impact fees to offset. But let's go ahead and plan for worst case scenario. And that's what we've been trying to do, tell you the worst possible case scenario to your taxes. So first, I want you to see the four school districts in York County and the debt service in each of those districts. So in Fort Mill, right now, their taxpayers are paying 85 mils of bond debt for schools. York is paying 84. Rock Hill is paying 52. And right now, in Clover, you're paying 18.7 for the last two bond referendums that we have on the book still. That is the debt service on your taxes right now. When we add $197 million and we refinance all of that into one now new debt service, we think it's going to add 30 more mills to the current debt levy for a total maximum of 51 mills over a 20-year period. And we're estimating that our interest rate is going to be at 2.1. Why did we estimate 2.1? Where did we get that number? Our financial advisor back in April and May when we were presenting this to the board as a possible bond resolution for them to approve said if we were going to bond referendum at that point in April of this past year, we would have gotten a 2.1% interest rate. 
Right now, interest rates are at an all-time high. It's a very, very good time to borrow money. And so that is part of why we wanted to do this bond referendum quickly and, and set a September bond referendum date so we can take advantage of the lower interest rates. But the other thing that I want to tell you is we did not calculate your debt service at 2.1% interest. Instead, we estimated it on the high side because when we, we can't guarantee what your interest rate is going to be until we sell the bond. And so we projected it to be at 5%. So this 50 mil increase, our 51 mils, 30 mil increase that we're projecting is based on a 5% interest rate instead of the 2.1 that we were quoted that we would have gotten last April. So again, we're projecting your taxes on the higher side. So let's take a look at what that projection is. When you look at the value of your home and you think about it in terms of $100,000, $200,000, $300,000, homes are taxed at 4%. So for $100,000 homes, the tax increase will be $120 per year, which is basically $10 a month. So you have to say, is my home $100,000 at $10 a month or is my home a $200,000 home? Is it more like $20 more a month? Is my home a $300,000 home more like $30 a month? That's a quick, easy way for you to kind of think off the top, what are my new taxes going to be? On investment property, which is taxed at 6%, those are your businesses, those are your investment properties, those are cars and boats. Per $100,000 value, it's $180 per year or $15 a month. My car is not valued at $100,000, so it wouldn't be $15 a month more, but you can think about it in those terms. So the things that you, I want you to consider as you are thinking about this tax increase, because that has been something that the, the community has been focused on. Remember, we estimated on the high side. Also remember, your impact fees will reduce the final amount. So we don't project we'll ever have to get you to the 51 mils because the impact fees will reduce that. And then finally, the one place and time where growth becomes our friend is that when more people move here, more people are paying into the bond debt. And so that shares the burden across more and it reduces each individual's taxes. In conclusion today, we want you to be focused on what's important in this bond referendum. To us, what's important is that our students have what they need to have strong learning environments that are going to meet the standard of performance that you've come to expect of us. This is our state championship 5A girls basketball team and we're very proud of them. And we think about often when these high school, when this high school splits into two, will we be able to maintain the excellence we've had in sports? And two 1,500-1,400 size high schools when this, when 25-26 uh, uh, hits, I think will be very strong 4A high schools and will compete in our region very, very nicely. The other major thing is remember, we're not trying to replicate this Applied Technology Center. This facility will serve both high schools. So why now? Why now to me is timing. We have an opportunity to capitalize on very low interest rates and build a high school now in today's dollars that will only get more expensive and an elementary school now in today's dollars that will only get more expensive if we put it off several years. We have time now to, get to support the middle schools until we can take over that middle school uh, ninth grade campus into a middle school. And when we do that, the capacity at Clover High School is going to be way over the capacity that it can hold. So we want the middle school to help right now to begin to plan for what we're going to need to support Clover Middle and Oak Ridge Middle School. And we've got to have the 36 to 42 months to get that high school built so that we can move those students. And then with regard to elementary school, we've got 2,666 homes coming in Bethel, Crowders, and Oak Ridge Elementary. We can't wait several years before we plan for that. Those three schools will reach capacity very, very quickly. I've been asked often what happens if this does not pass, and that's a very fair question. We will begin immediately looking at some temporary fixes. Uh, we will have to purchase some mobile units, we believe, for Oak Ridge Middle School. We could potentially look to increase some class sizes where we can. And we may have to rezone some areas as we begin to feel the pinch in some of our elementary schools especially. We will reconvene and we will begin to look at other options. 
because we don't believe that we can avoid a building plan. We're going to have to bring back something that the community will support at some point. And so we will begin to kind of think through that. We hope this has given you the information that you need to make an informed choice. You can also find all of this information, including this presentation, on our website, www.clover.k12.sc.us backslash capital projects and you can see this presentation, the long presentation, the FAQ, and the fact and fiction documents. We're also going to be recording some tax samples of how your tax bills can be calculated to help our public out. Thank you very much Clover School District and have a wonderful day.